Can we adopt a position of reverence or prayer, please? Our Father and our God, we thank you for this, your Holy Sabbath day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the privilege of being in your house once more again. We invite your Holy Spirit to continue to be with us. We thank you, dear Father, for safely to another week you have brought us. And we've come, dear Father, in no other name but the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Father, we're here today to lift up your name, to glorify you, to praise you, to worship you. Please accept our worship, I pray. Father, be with those who are worshiping with us online. Be with the preacher today, O oh God. Put words in his mouth that will bring hope, which will bring life, and will draw us closer to you. Father, be with, every, be with every man, woman, boy, girl, and child of this congregation. I pray, O oh God, that we will draw close to you. I pray that you may put your words in our hearts, in our lives, may be transformed for your glory, that we would lift up the name of Jesus, because if you be lifted up, you'll draw men unto yourself. Yeah. Father, bless each and every one. As we come, our faces differ, and so do our needs. Dear Father, some are grieving. I pray, Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit to comfort them, to soothe their grief in hearts, dear Father. May they not grieve or mourn who do, with, as those who do not have any hope, but may they look unto Jesus, give them a faith that will not waver nor wonder, a faith that will hold fast, and a faith that will continue looking unto Jesus, who is the art of the creator and the finisher of faith. There are those, dear Father, who do not have work. I pray, O oh Lord, that you may open doors that no man can close. I pray that you may continue to provide for them and their household. I pray, dear Father, for those who are sick, you said in your word, it is your desire that we should all prosper and be in good health. If there's any among us this morning, dear Father, and those who are praying for, if there's any sick, oh God, I pray that you may touch them. I pray that may, if it would bring glory to your name, that you will heal them in the name of Jesus. And I pray that they may have a testimony that will, bring, that will lift up the name of Jesus. Because you said, if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself. Father, bless everything that is happening in this church today. May your Holy Spirit continue to rest and abide with us. Dear Father, plant your word when it, when it is delivered. Plant it deep in our hearts that we may not sin against you. But we may take the word and that we may apply it to our lives, that we may look like Jesus. We may live for Jesus. We may be true and faithful witnesses and disciples. When we leave this place, I pray that we will leave better than we have come and that the name of Jesus may be honored, be lifted and glorified. Father, thank you for all that you've done for us in the past. We thank you for what you're doing for us now. And we thank you for what you will do for us in the future. Father, we prayed and we're thanking you in advance for hearing and answering our prayers. Because you are God and you're worthy to be praised. There is none like you. And we want to say hallelujah. We want to say thank you for all you've done. We have nothing to fear lest we forget the way you have led us in the past. So dear Father, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. We thank you in Jesus' worthy name. Amen, amen. and amen.
morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Praise the Lord. You know, we've been blessed to have um, El Rey with us this week it's from last Sabbath and been blessing us throughout the course of this week. Uh, he was due also to be here this morning. But like good speakers, they get so booked up. And so he had uh, another appointment. Uh, but we praise God because where the Elisha, Elijah had to be somewhere else, he had a mantle and he dropped it to Elisha. And so we are blessed this morning to have Elder Adrian Lee, who have spoken to us here before. And it was Pastor Ray who handpicked him to deliver the message for him this morning. Pastor Ray is back with us this afternoon to conclude and to do our anointing service. So just come back this afternoon at half three. You'll be blessed, but I'm sure you'll be blessed um, by Elder Lee this morning. God has something in store for us. Amen? Amen. 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 Same, we've looked about the everyone loves gifts. And we talked about the different gifts. Same spirit. Amen? Amen. So welcome. Elder Lee's no stranger to us. He has spoken here before. Uh, so we welcome him. But before he does that, the praise team will give us a song of meditation. protection while we sleep we pray for healing for prosperity we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering and all What if trials of this life 
Good morning. It's good to be with you again. Happy Sabbath. Um, I am stepping in for Pastor Ray, um, and he will be with you this afternoon. I pray that, I believe you've had a good time, amen? Amen. 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 And we pray the Spirit of God will continue to be with you. Um, let's, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father God, Lord, as I stand here, Father, I pray that you'll hide me far behind the cross. Father, I pray, Lord, that you alone will be seen, heard, and lifted up. Father, I pray that someone's life as well as mine will be touched and changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me start by saying that prayer is the one thing that makes the difference in everything. Prayer will change your life for the better. And I'm sure there are someone here that can testify that you have been through some situations or some places or some positions in your life where you gave it over to God. And as the songwriter said, I gave it over to the Lord and he worked it all out. You see, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what your predicament is. It doesn't matter what your problem is or what your situation is. I have come to let you know that I am a living witness that prayer changes things. Prayer will change things for the better. Prayer is able to make a difference and is able to have the ability to turn situations around. Prayer can open doors. Prayer can create opportunities. Prayer has a way of opening your eyes to see the goodness and the grace and glory of God. You see, prayer works from the inside out. Prayer can take your enemy and make them and turn them into uh, someone that would deliver a blessing to your life. Prayer has a way of working on your children. Prayer can turn a marriage around. Prayer can make ways out of no ways. And prayer can do miraculous things. And I don't know about you, but someone needs to know about the power of prayer. You see, I heard one preacher say that whatever prayer can't do cannot be done. And so it is, prayer is so important that prayer is the one thing that Jesus taught his disciples to do. And so we have to make prayer a part of our daily life. If you only pray when you are in trouble, then here's the problem. You are already in trouble. And so someone once said that behind every great woman stands, or behind every great man stands a great woman. And so I can testify to that because I had a praying mother. And so in life and in scripture, we can see that Abraham had Sarah, Isaac had Rachel, Samson had Delilah, Ahab had, Jeze- had Jezebel, and some of these were not so great, but Samuel, though the first great prophet, had a praying mother called Hannah. And so Mary is mo- one of the most popular names that people like to give their children out of the Bible, but she is clearly favored but today we want to talk about a woman named Hannah. Hannah personifies motherhood. The name Hannah means grace and so she almost wasn't a mother but she had been called the model mother of the Old Testament and the Bible speaks of her sorrows, the Bible speaks of her supplication, the Bible speaks of her sacrifice. And so today we're going to talk about Hannah. And so the message today is entitled, When You Pray. So Hannah had a loving husband that couldn't bear, she he couldn't bear her, she couldn't bear him a child. And so in those days, a woman found her worth in children. And so it is still the same today. A man finds his worth in what he does, and a woman finds her worth in her family and her home. And it's interesting to see that the word, that the word Elkanah means uh, um, God has created. And so just imagine that her husband has a name that says God has created, but yet 
he can't bear her. She can't bear him no children. She cannot raise him up no children. So she has become barren. The, the, her, the womb of Hannah has become barren. And so imagine how she has become the laughing stock. This, uh, the, imagine how he must have become the laughing stock. God has created is his name, but yet he cannot have any children. And so in Palestine that was bad, but even in this day and age it's bad because some some of the some is sometimes it's a sign of shame and disgrace upon a man if they don't have any children to bear their name. And so it's a bit like Abraham. And so his name was Abraham Father, and that's what it means. And along came and, and God came along and gave him a promise that he would be the father of many nations, of the sand of the seashore, and he would have sons and daughters and and Abraham was getting old and he couldn't bear a child and so he decided to take matters into his own hands and decided that maybe God wasn't maybe God wasn't coming through on the promise and so he began to and so he lied with Sarah so that they could make a child but God still may fulfill the promise and so saints of God, sometimes things may look impossible. Maybe sometimes you may think you're in a barren land. Maybe it's physical barrenness. Maybe, maybe it's a medical problem. Maybe it's a problem that you have in your life, an illness or a disease. Or maybe you feel that it's scraping all the life out of you and you feel unfruitful, dissatisfied, stagnant in your very soul. Maybe it's an emotional thing. You feel the lack of love in your life from your family from your friends or the absence of a partner that has long gone or maybe or the, someone that you have loved and maybe it seems that God has not fulfilled or filled the gap perhaps it's a mental barrenness perhaps it's depression or anxiety or feeling inadequate or maybe it's spiritual barrenness that the fruits of the spirit are sadly absent from your life and maybe from your walk with God but whatever the barrenness is that's causing you to be angry with God it doesn't matter you need to bring it to Jesus and so if we look at her husband he says that he says to her am I not better to the and am I not better to you than 10 sons and sure look at the love that I have for you it doesn't matter what you're talking about how many people come and tell you come along and tell you that when you're going through unfruitfulness in your life or barrenness in your life no, no that there's no words that they will speak that will solve it and I think that perhaps maybe the most confusing thing about this passage of scripture is found in the end where it says that this it says that the Lord shut up her womb now let's not be mistaken it's not a mistranslation the Lord shut up her womb and so looking at this from a human perspective you think how can this poor woman her heart is breaking her heart is torn into pieces because of her barrenness and guess who created it god created it why would god do such a thing maybe we are asking ourselves the same question in your own life why would god do this to this why would god do this to me what benefit would this have but if we had spiritual hindsight, if we look back at the whole situation, where this woman came, where did this barrenness came from? We see that it's a gift. Perhaps until we, we don't see until we get to glory, then we will realize why God has put us through what we have gone through. But to put it simply, I believe that sometimes the reason God puts, brings barrenness into our lives is to bring us nearer to him. And so just as a torch shines brighter when it is swung and to and fro or when, when you have some plants that smell sweeter when you throw it in the fire and, and sometimes things sometimes things get better when it is bruised and broken but a broken heart before God it makes sweet sense and fragrance to his nostrils. 
And so sometimes God has to put us on our back in order for us to look up and to realize that he is God. And so if you look at the barren women in the Bible, you see a very interesting study. You find that, first of all, you find it in the person of Sarah. Then Sarah was barren before her husband and she couldn't bear she couldn't bear any children. Then you find it in Rachel. Then you find it in Mona, who gave birth to Samson. Then you find it in Ruth, who was barren. Then you find it in the New Testament of Elizabeth, the mother of... And then you find it in Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, even though she bore a child, she was still a virgin. And so she didn't know a man. And so these women were all in impossible situations. They were all in impossible natural situations that they couldn't get out of their predicament by themselves or by the flesh. But saints of God, through God's grace and through the Spirit of God, they could get out. And so, Samson, and so Samuel, the greatest man of all history, came from this woman, Sarah. And so from Sarah, sorry, it was Isaac. And from Rachel was Joseph. And from Mona, the wife of Samson. And from Ruth, it was Obed. And from the grandfather of King David, from Elizabeth, it was John the Baptist. And I want you to picture the home here for a moment the, the, of, of Leah and Rachel and Jacob. They're, now they're looking at the passage and find that we find in Genesis chapter 30 where Rachel has been mocked by her neighbors and friends for she has reproach upon her barren womb and then I want you to see her perhaps coming into Jacob's tent with her eyes red sore and disheveled and her voice is hoarse and groaning before God and she comes to Jacob frustrated and, and, and humiliated and despairing and she cries a piercing cry says Jacob give me a child or I die and that cry of tears and, her heart of, and the heart of Jacob is sore and, 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 and the cry of barrenness of one who reads with with avenge because of the adversity of in verse 5 in verse 6 and 7 you'll find it and that her wife and so you'll find that her, the, the wife of Elkanah was provoked and it literally means that she was provoked it literally means that she was taunted day and night and thundering accusations was abused about because she couldn't bear children and so we find that this is the same that speaking when 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 and she's throwing She's throwing, she's, throwing, she's praying to God and she's throwing it up to, to God about how she's feeling. And so this was a godly home, but they were going into the city of Shiloh to worship God in the feast. And perhaps they did this many times in the year. It was a godly home and they recognized God in their life. And so the very name of Elkanah speaks of that. And so Hannah's name speaks of the grace of God, but yet in a godly home, it was still div a divided home because of this barrenness. And so Hannah goes up to pray. And this had to be part of her sorrow. She must have started to wonder if God had heard her prayers. She was able, was God able after so many years to answer her request? And so how many times have we given up on God? How many times have we stopped asking because we've never seen the fruit of our answered prayers? The psalmist says in Psalm 74 verse 10, O Lord, O God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Maybe you are here today maybe like many of us have been asking the question how long is this going to go on God this barrenness this anxiousness this agony this ang this anxiety within my soul this circumstance that I'm in how long is how long am I going to go through it when am I going to come out when am I going to feel like this woman uh, uh, will maybe we feel like the, the the woman of the unjust judge you remember the Lord spoke to her in Luke and, and, and speak 
speaks to her, the unjust judge who never feared God or men, but she was going to, f- but how was he going to fear this little lady with a little problem as far as he was concerned? But the word of God tells us this, this, that this lady came again and again and again, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And the unjust judge got so fed up that he said, I will avenge her lest her constant coming she weary me and the Lord Jesus Christ himself went on to conclude and to sum up by saying shall not the God of earth avenge his own elect that cry to him day and night saints of God we must be we may be sorrow stricken but never let us give up on God because he never gives up on us And so perhaps in our time of waiting, God's answering is God's answering is to prepare us, is strengthening us to be used greatly by him. And so her supplication became by giving herself. Hannah went to God for a son. She was barren. Her heart was in pieces. But I want you to see that she had a heart that was in prayer. And so the Bible says that Hannah spoke in her heart. And it was a wonder why, any wonder why Samuel became such a man of prayer. You see, Hannah's reaction wasn't like any other barren women in scripture. She didn't turn to her husband and reprimand him because he couldn't couldn't bear her, uh, 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 raise her up a seed or didn't get, didn't get the, or be like the other or get another wife to, to, to sleep with him so that they could raise a child in their name. But she said, for this child, I prayed. And can you see that the mother or father for this child, I prayed. It's no wonder that Samuel is thought as a mother's prayer. And so a father's encouragement changed the whole nation before God because of her prayer in the the face of God, saints of God, prayer is the golden key. In fact, Ellen White says that prayer is the golden key in the hands of faith that will open heaven's storehouse. And so prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscle of God and moves the muscle of power. And so prayer was Hannah's answer. And so in the early hours of the morning, you and I need to seek God. Why? Because prayer is the only answer. And so prayer is the only answer for God, for our hope. If we do not live for God and live with God in the forefront and the sum of all we need, you and I will be lost. You see, I have a deep belief that when we are willing to do what God wants us to do, he will answer our prayers. The, prayer, the answers may not come immediately, But remember, God's timetable is not our timetable. And so for Hannah, it took several years. And so our answers are not always immediate. In verse 8, it says that you see that this prayer was filled with anger. And so even her husband says, why is your heart grieved? That that word grieved in the Hebrew is idom, which means angry, which is really not saddened. But why are you angry? Why is your heart filled with anger? Many of us have been angry before God or angry with God. But what do you do with that anger? That's what matters. Do you take it to your friends, to the highways and to the byways? Or do you pour out your heart before God and let God know how you're feeling. You see, wasn't it the apostle that told us that be ye angry but sin not? You see, God wants your anger. He wants to hear how you feel, but rather than pouring it out to others, we need to pour it out before God because God wants to take our broken heart and heal it. And so, It was anger and a broken heart that brought Hannah to her needs. But it did not bring her away from worshipping God. We find that she fasted, that she didn't eat of the sacrifice. She didn't eat of the offering because she was so consumed with anger. How many of you have been like that before? You're so angry with someone that you can't even eat your food. 
Hannah was so angry, so consumed that she couldn't eat. And so she came before God and nothing mattered until her prayer was answered. See, Martin Luther said that I never worked better than when I'm inspired by anger. When I'm angry, I write. I can pray. I can preach well. Then my whole temperament is quickened. My understanding is sharpened and all mundane vexations and temptations depart. When we direct when he directed his anger righteousness and when he directed his anger righteous that it may be before God in prayer I want you to know that Hannah didn't utter a vague prayer Hannah was very specific you see a vague prayer will not change a nation a vague prayer will not bring a revival a vague prayer will not bring lost souls to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ she was broken and in verse 10 we find that she prayed unto the Lord and wept bitterly and so God wants our brokenness the psalmist says that the Lord is nigh unto them that are broken hearted and saveth such as to a contrite spirit and so her tears were the physical evidence that her heart was broken before God and God was saying this to this woman look look at your tears I'm putting them in a bottle there oh there are many tears that are shed in the dark there are many tears that are shed in quiet places but I want you to see that God hears our tears Spurgeon says that liquid tears are liquid prayers do you not see that God is washing your eyes with God is washing your eyes with your tears you might not see it this way in your life but you may do but you will be drawn closer to him this woman was angry we can be angry she was broken we too can be broken but what but what it did it cost her everything she gave up everything she was what she was asking for but she asked for a son and she brought it before God and even before she received the son the she had given it over to the Lord and so like David she said neither will Will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord of that that does cost me nothing? One reason we don't get one reason we don't get the answers to our prayer. James says that we are, we have not because we ask not, and so this but this woman Hannah had prayed she didn't she didn't do that she 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 gave it over to the God she she said if you give me a son I will give him back to you she didn't say that give me a son and I will keep him and do what I want with she said give me a son God and I will give him back to you and so some of us ask for careers some of us ask for jobs some of us ask for all these things but don't want to give it back to God when we ask God for something we have to give Give it back to God too. And so her prayer cost her everything. She came to God and she said, I am your maidservant. She was humble in the sight of God's sovereignty. And she said, Lord, remember me. And so she showed, and so God showed grace to Hannah. And so the very name means that. And so that cost of moment of crisis in meeting, it, she met with God. And it didn't cost her the very best years of, the, of her life. But she said that she would give this child to God all the days of his life and no razor would touch his head and so for the law of Nazareth it was only for a period of time of this young man's life but for Samuel she dedicated him to, for, she dedicated Samuel for his whole life and so Hannah made a solemn pledge she asked God for a son and she named him Samuel which means ask of the Lord and so her prayer was angry her prayer was costly but it was spiritual and so we find that her husband said to her asked her that she was praying from her heart and so in Palestine at this time public prayer was always audible audible you never prayed in public but she was down in her mouth and so there was nothing coming out and she was praying spiritually before God she was pouring out her hearts before God and so look at the burdens that you and I have if we was to all count them and number them we would be here from now till eternity until we list them and uh, but Yet God hears and answers them. But can I ask you, all we need to do is take our needs and cast them to the Lord in prayer. The songwriter says, oh, what needless pain we sorrow. Oh, what needless pain we bear 
all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And so it's a wonder that even when we can't find the words to say that our very soul has an advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, and takes our groanings that cannot be uttered as we read in our scripture reading in Romans 8, that we have an advocate within our souls that translates the things that we can't even put into words to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and our mediator and our advocate and God and takes it before God and those groanings that the Holy Spirit has sent him and he interprets them in a way that is blameless and acceptable before our Heavenly Father. And so as we said... What needless pain we bear. And so we need to carry everything to God in prayer. And the amazing thing is that her husband challenged her theoretically because for being a daughter of Bell and his sons, but never make that mistake of being a person whose own children aren't born again but are ready to criticize someone else. You see... She could be misunderstood. How, how, how she was spiritual in her prayer, how it cost her everything, how she was broken, how she was angry, how she was at the end of her tether, how she was in pain. She could have been misunderstood, but she poured it out before God and her prayer was answered. Her heart was at rest after prayer. And the Bible says that after she prayed, she Eight, and she, her countenance was lifted and she went her way. Why? Because the Bible says in Philippians, be anxious for nothing but everything in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving make your requests known before God. And so when we pray, we can't just be asking and asking and asking and asking. We have to do something else. We have to put some praise and thanksgiving on top of that. Why? Because the songwriter says when the praises go up, the blessings come down. The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. And so the Bible says in verse 27, it says, for this child I prayed and the Lord had gave me my the lord giving to my petition which i answered which i asked of him and so this woman went her way and did eat and her countenance was no more sad and god heard her prayer and god was faithful to his promise and he said that he is faithful to his prom and even and he said he's faithful to his promise today and so what he done for hannah he can do in your life today and so the bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man of they left much. And so the story is told of an older man trying to show a young man what is what is want to what is what it means to want something so badly. And so he took the young man to a pool of water and he pushed his head under and he held this young man's head until he wanted the breath so bad that he struggled with all his might to free himself and he was able to breathe. And so the older man explained to him. This is how intense your desire should be. And so can we do this today? Can we just get with God for a moment? And can we ask him for the desires of our hearts? Can we ask him for what we're really asking? Maybe it may be a child. Maybe it may be for a loved one to be saved. Whatever it is, we need to bring it to God in prayer. The songwriter says that he is able He's able. I know my Lord is able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Why? Because he healed the brokenhearted. He sets the captives free. He caused the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see that I know he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. And so saints of God, the question is, when I pray, when you pray, what happens? What happens? God hears and God answers. And so God will take your broken heart and he will answer your prayer. It may not be immediate, but it will be in God's time. May God bless you.
enjoy the day. Thank you for that powerful message indeed. I now believe you, you saw Elijah going and you took the mantle from him. God has used you greatly, just like Ray could have been used. We want to now uh, get to the last song as uh, we end this service. So praise team, please. And just to remind you, we'll have a church board on Sabbath. So remember that. Sunday, yeah, 27th from 10. Sorry, please stand with me, church, as we're singing our closing song. Six to five, higher ground. This afternoon, there will be an anointing service. But we want to just give you the opportunity to just, just raise your hand. If you're, you're going through something and you're like, Lord, I need you. I need you. But it's not just a case of I need you. I know that you're going to come through for me. Amen. And so we're not just going to pray and ask God for something. We're going to put some thanksgiving on top of that because we believe that God is able. Yes. And he said that before you even ask, he's already done it. Yes. And that's our prayer. Father God, Lord, we're going through some stuff. But Lord, we know that you are a God that hears and answers. Lord, we believe that you have already answered. And so, Lord, we bring our broken heart before you. Just like, Hannah, we say that for this situation, we prayed. And Lord, we know that you're a God that hears and answers. And so, Lord, whilst we're in our waiting period, help us to wait, but to give thanks. And so this afternoon, Father, as 
we anoint, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will anoint us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. That, Father, when we leave this place, we will not leave the same, but we will know that you have already heard and you have already answered. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bless. 